Yeah, hello folks and welcome to the Techniverse channel. Today we are going to be looking at support secrets in Kira. So basically we're going to look at the different ways to support an overhang and I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how to utilize them most efficiently. So the first thing that you're going to notice is that my overhangs are pretty steep. On this particular model there is very little that needs to be supported and it is a very very steep overhang. So one of the things we want to do, scroll right down to our support settings and in here you have the option to generate support once you click that you'll get a few more options right now my support overhang angle is set to 59 degrees now in most cases 45 degrees is where you're going to want to start you can uh, print a special model that will tell you your overhangs and you can kind of see on that model where you'll be able to print without support I was good up to about 60 degrees so I took it a little bit under that and you're welcome to try that as well but for now I would recommend just supporting everything over a 45 degree angle until you print one of those tests and you know what your angle is so the most important thing here is the support structure and right now it's set to normal and when it's set to normal you can choose a pattern there are several patterns in here and these patterns have a lot to do with the infill patterns they're exactly the same and they're just used for support instead so I tend to stick to zigzag or lines depending on the model but let's take a look at this real quick we'll slice it and I'll show you something so here we are sliced and you would think that lines would be exactly what it sounds like just one line up and down back and forth with nothing around the edges but there is a special button in here called connect support lines and this will put an edge around it that makes it a lot more stable so it's basically using those lines as the infill and building a shell around the outside this helps prevent those from getting knocked over because those standard lines are pretty thin. It's one extrusion width, and once they get to a certain height, they're pretty easy to knock over and break. So um, this setting, along with all the other support settings, can be found by opening the cog wheel and simply typing support or scrolling down to the support section. Now in here, there are a ton of settings. Now the ones with the checkboxes, those are the ones that you have the option to use with your settings that you have activated. So any of these ones that aren't checked in the setting visibility aren't going to show up in here. So if you'd like to say use your support Z distance and change that, you need to click it and then it will show up over here. Um, there's lots of things in here to look at and there are a ton of different steps. I wouldn't go through here and drastically change a bunch of this because you'll have a hard time getting it back to the way it was without reloading your profile. So there are some important ones such as support roof and support interface that is going to determine how easy it is to remove the support from your model and there is also a couple of options for where did the other one go the connect support lines there's also a connect support zigzag one and that is right here and then there is an option for support density and that one's pretty good to have on if i turn that up i'll get more support if i turn it down i'll get less support so pretty interesting I like to leave that on and be able to adjust it depending on my model so let's jump back real quick and we're gonna look at a couple other options for support so there is a setting for per model supports okay it's gonna be over here on the side we're gonna look at the per model settings and if you look through here you can either decide to print the whole model as support or you can modify some of the settings so let's go ahead and look at the support blocker option okay now the support blocker is exactly what it sounds like it allows you to place something on the model to block support in that particular area so let's say I didn't want to support this finger I could click and it'll put a square there that will prevent it from supporting it so let's put a couple in here just to illustrate this and by the way once you place one you can click out and then click on just that object these are basically just cubes it's known as an eraser down here you can select it down here as well and hit delete okay so let's slice this guy and you'll see that only the little red parts that aren't touched by the support blocker such as here here and all around here are going to be supported so let's check it out all right and as you can see this is a perfect example of what we wanted you can still see the squares there slightly if you look from just the right angle let's see if we can get it there there we go so this is where we put our support blockers as you will notice 
this section of support is a lot thinner and actually the exact amount of that cube space is missing from in between the middle of the support otherwise it would look like this so support blockers are working and working quite well what other options do we have with them well since it is an object I can take that and I can move it slightly or I can scale it just like anything else so let's say we want to do a slightly larger support blocker we can do that simply by increasing the scale uh, you can also rotate and manipulate them so very very handy tool for blocking support where you don't want it um, in this case these are extreme overhangs and you're definitely going to want to support them but in some cases when you have a slight overhang over the top of a model you're going to click support on build plate only and you're not going to want to support those parts because you're not going to want the interface at the top and the bottom so like I said on this model you would uh, obviously because you're looking at like a, a 90 degree angle you have to have support here or it's not going to print that finger properly but that is basically the gist of the support blockers now I can go in here select all the objects from my object list and erase them or I can go in here and make some different options so if I go in here to my per model settings select the model and then hit select settings I can go in here and actually do support at a different angle so say for for one model I want to do my support angle at 59 but this model I want to do my support angle at 45 so all I have to do is hit that and it changes the settings for me so it is pretty well good to go it stays the same just like that and there are also some sections that are pretty interesting like don't support overlaps this is going to be if two models are in contact with each other um, and you can modify the settings of those as well one of the other cool things you can do let me grab another STL real quick is let's see let's this is just a block we'll use this okay so we can take this model here and print it as support you can see it becomes checked like that and it is basically going to print as my support pattern and not as the object that you're seeing so it'll be that shape but it won't be solid it won't have infill it won't have a top on it it'll basically just be the walls with the support infill and here we see that all sliced and processed if we scroll down here into those layers you'll see that it is all support as I said looking down from the top you can also see there is no top on it it does not have a shell or a top surface it is now just support so this option is very useful if you're building a custom model and you want custom support to support just a single area you can model that in as well and then designate it as support so these are the support basics these are the main things you need to know about what to do and how to use support real quickly before we go I want to cover one more thing and that is one of my favorite support options that is tree support now tree support for the longest time was a perk that they kept down here in the experimental settings I don't actually have it turned on here I'll show you uh, it has since been moved um, it's because they deprecated that e experimental setting so um, but it is now in the support section and instead of normal what you're gonna do is select tree and we'll hit slice and I'll show you these and give you a little explanation of why I like them better okay so my fave here is the tree support so this as you can see is actually using a lot less filament than standard support it's trying to keep it all in one local chunk here and as you can see it basically just creates these tubes that snake around your model without touching it too much and the interface for this to remove is super super simple so inside here you won't have any lines or anything like that there's no no infill or support pattern this is basically just a single outer shell okay so think vase mode and it's gonna go around the perimeter one time and build that up into a conical support structure that looks somewhat like a tree because of these branching uh, uh, structures so you can go in and change the angle at which you'll allow these to curve and how thick they are and things like that the standard settings work really really well and because of the small surface area that actually has contact with the model the supports are really really easy to to remove so that's why I tend to go with tree support on pretty much all of my prints unless something else in particular is required you will also notice that the support blockers 
did still work for my tree support. There is nothing supported here, even though there should be. So if I were to remove those and re-slice this, I would get a little bit larger tree. But honestly, even with those support blockers in there and this little bit supported right here, that should still print. Uh, let's go back and look. Uh, you can see this is a little bit of an overhang that might might cause some droopage because like I said it is past the degree at which I need support but that's kinda iffy whether or not you need that there um, we can go ahead and like I said if we remove these and then reslice it we're gonna get thicker support here I don't think we need to do that I think you pretty much got the gist of this so that is gonna be it for this video guys I hope you learned something about supports and that you're a little bit more well versed on how to use them and what settings do what if you have any particular questions or suggestions please leave them in the comments down below I love making videos like this and teaching people things and helping them to understand things they don't quite understand so like I said if you're curious something you want to know if there's something you think I should know that I didn't go over in this video definitely leave that down below as well be sure to subscribe to the channel. We have lots more Kira videos that you can take a look at. We cover several topics, and I am always open to suggestions. Don't forget to leave a like on this video. That is one of the ways that you make it easier for other people who are looking for the same solution to find our videos. And be sure to hit that bell for notifications to be kept up to date when we post a new video. I don't just do Kira videos. I have videos on everything from Tinkercad to Blender to Fusion 360 to Kira, several other slicers I cover, including Idea Maker, Raise 3D Slicer. Um, there's there's a ton. So be sure to check the channel content and stop back often because we're here and we are making videos all the time. Stick around, guys. I got another YouTube recommended video for you right here. And if you haven't already, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Make sure that you smash that like button. We'll see you in the next one. Technivorous out.